Today we're going to make one of the most popular dishes in the Arabian Peninsula and we'll make it so good that any Arabian grandma would be proud. It is the one, the only, mandi. This Yemeni, Saudi and Gulfy dish involves cooking meat over rice that all its delicious juices infuse the rice. It is so incredibly flavorful. And although we can't cook it the traditional way by digging a charcoal pit in the back garden, we'll still give it that authentic touch by smoking it and serving it with dakul sauce. First up, don't be afraid by this recipe. It's easy to make and packed with flavor. The best part is that you can make it as simple or as complex as you like. Start with the core of the dish, cooking meat over rice, and then figure out the toppings or sauce that you want to include. For an even simpler version, cook the chicken directly on top of the rice. And if you're really in a rush, use a pressure cooker or slow cooker to speed things up. First thing we'll do is make some dakko sauce because it's seriously life-changing. Even if you're not into mandi, you need to try this sauce out. It's made with tomatoes, garlic and green chilies and it adds the perfect amount of fresh heat to any dish. To start, freshly squeeze a lemon to get lemon juice, then slice up one to two green chilies of any variety or heat level. Roughly chop three tomatoes, then add them to a blender with the chilies. Add three cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of hot chili flakes and half a teaspoon of salt. Pour in two to three tablespoons of the lemon juice and you're ready to blend. Blend this all together until everything is finely chopped and it comes together into a sauce. I prefer it thick like this, but most people thin it down with a further two to three tablespoons of water until it's nice and smooth. And this is what it should look like. It's the perfect sauce for topping mandi and it only gets better with time. For the actual mandi, most people use chicken, but you can always switch it up with lamb. Start with one and a half kilograms of chicken, which traditionally you'd cut in half, or just use pre-cut pieces. If you're starting with a whole chicken, you'll need to spatchcock it, then break the breastbone and cut it into two pieces. If you get stuck, there's plenty of YouTube videos that will show you how to do this. Now comes the fun part, pick your marinade. Option A is a quick and easy wet rub. Option B is a traditional overnight brine. For either version, start off with a little saffron. It'll add flavor and color to your chicken and rice, plus it makes the dish look amazing. A small pinch or 30 to 50 threads is all you need, but even though it's important, feel free to skip it as it is the world's most expensive spice. Put the saffron in a mortar with some salt, then grind it into a fine powder. Next, add a couple tablespoons of boiling water and let it steep for 15 minutes. A quarter of an hour later, your saffron should be liquid gold. You've now unlocked the key to every great saffron dish. To turn this into a wet rub, mix together two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon each of ground cardamom and white pepper, then half a teaspoon of turmeric and an eighth of a teaspoon of ground clove. You'll end up with a golden mixture that smells amazing, but be careful because it will stain anything it touches yellow, including yourself. Rub the mixture on both sides of the chicken and get it into all the nooks and crannies, so your chicken is well coated like this. Just make sure you wear gloves when you apply it so you don't make the same mistake as me. Let it marinate for at least half an hour, but any amount of time will work. To get maximum flavor, you can do option B, the overnight brine. Make the same saffron liquid and add it to a bowl, then double the amounts of the ground spices and salt and add them to the saffron. Pour in about two liters of water and add the chicken directly to the brine. Most brines would require you to boil the liquid, but we haven't done that as it's not traditional, so the spices will eventually settle. Don't worry about it though. Let the chicken brine for at least two hours, but six to 12 is ideal, and some people even go a full 24 hours. This method will give you much nicer looking chicken that has a glazed appearance and ends up a lot juicier when cooked. After sorting out the chicken, it's time to get the rice going. Try to get your hands on Iranian basmati rice as it has a slightly shorter grain and nuttier flavor than regular basmati. Measure out three cups of rice and give it a thorough wash to get rid of any surface starch. I always do three to four washes until the water runs clear as this ensures your rice won't stick together when it cooks. Some recipes involve soaking the rice before cooking, but I didn't find that that made much of a difference. Next, dice up a red onion or regular brown onion into small pieces. The first time I made this, the red onion turned blue overnight in my leftovers. I have no clue why, but I'm gonna stick to brown onions from now. Anyway, you wanna chop your onion to this size. To add some flavor to the rice, we need aromatics. Grab a whole head of garlic and cut it in half. Take five cardamom pods and crack them, then get a two to three inch stick of cinnamon. You also want four cloves and two dried black limes. If you haven't used these sun-dried limes before, they give food a deep and umami lime flavor. You just need to poke them with a few holes. Throw in half a teaspoon of whole black peppercorns. Then if you want some heat, add one or two green chilies and again poke those with a knife. Okay, let's get the rice cooking. Heat up a tablespoon of vegetable oil in the tall pot and add the onions. Saute them over medium heat for about five to six minutes until they're softened and starting to look translucent. Now add all the whole spices. Just hold back on the garlic and chili for now. Fry the spices with the onions and oil for a couple of minutes so that the aromas really wake up. Once you can smell them, add the washed rice, followed by two and a quarter teaspoons of salt and 600 milliliters of chicken stock or water. Give everything a good mix, then toss in the green chili and garlic halves. 
finally scraped the sides of the pot to get any stuck rice down, then turn the heat off. This next part is what makes Mandy Mandy. We want to place the chicken on top of the pot so that any of its cooking juices can drip onto the rice. If you have a pizza tray it will be great as it already has holes, but if it's too big for your pot or you don't have one, use a single layer of foil and create your own lid. Securely crimp it over the lip of the pot, then get something pointy like a meat thermometer or toothpick and punch a load of holes into the foil. Just remember to use a single layer of foil. I did multiple layers on my first try and the chicken juices got trapped in between them. Great, now let's place the chicken on top of the foil lid. This is the brine chicken which has taken on a nice yellow colour. Place the chicken skin side up and try keep the pieces from overlapping. Now take a small piece of baking paper and place it on top of the chicken, then cover the whole pot with one more piece of foil. Seal this all the way around the pot as you are essentially making a lid to trap in the chicken and rice. Now preheat your oven to 180 degrees celsius and place the pot in the centre and you've got an hour for the whole mandy to cook. That will give you plenty of time to get the other parts sorted. Now while that's cooking let's quickly talk about today's sponsor Surfshark VPN. A VPN or virtual private network is a great tool for anyone who wants to keep their internet traffic safe and secure. VPNs like Surfshark work by encrypting your internet traffic and routing it through one of many secure servers, which makes it difficult for anyone to monitor or track what you're doing online. Think of encryption like covering food in foil. Once it's covered, it's impossible for anyone besides you to know what's under the foil, but in this case the foil is encryption and the food is actually cat food. Encryption is especially important if you're always on the go and you use public Wi-Fi networks, which are often unsecured and vulnerable to attack. There could be anyone trying to get at your data and having a VPN on your devices is the easiest way to keep your traffic safe. Surfshark allows you to get around geographical restrictions on accessing content. A VPN can help you access restricted content by making it appear as if you're using the internet from a different location. This is useful if you want to access content that is only available in other countries or if you're traveling and you want to access the content you usually use back home. Surfshark are running a special offer for my subscribers of 83% off and 3 extra months for free. Go to surfshark.deal slash middle eats to claim the offer and there's a 30 day money back guarantee. That's 83% off plus 3 free months with the code middle eats. Thank you Surfshark. While we wait for the mandy to finish cooking let's put together some toppings. First up let's make some fried sultanas. These add a little pops of sweetness to the mandy and help take the dish to the next level. Just grab some golden sultanas and measure out half to a third of a cup in a bowl. Pour over some boiling water and let them soak for around 15 minutes so they can rehydrate. Then dry them off with a paper towel. Heat up a small pot and add in a tablespoon of oil, then add your sultanas. Be careful because if they're still wet they can spit oil at you. Fry them in the oil for 2-3 to three minutes until they puff up like this, then drain them onto paper towels and they're done. The next topping is fried almond slices which add a contrasting crunchy texture to the dish. Add half to a third of a cup of almonds to the same pot with the oil. Fry for about a minute and a half until golden, then quickly remove them and drain on some paper towels. Give those a sprinkle of salt as soon as you can and there you have it. Delicious fried sultanas and almond slices ready to top off your mendi. Once the hour of cooking is up, it's time to give the chicken that signature glazed look. For this you'll need to make a quick oil infusion. Start by grinding up some saffron with some salt, then add in half a teaspoon of turmeric and mix them together. Add a tablespoon of oil and keep stirring until you have a deep gold colour oil. Now take a brush and apply the oil all over your chicken, then place it back in the oven for an additional 5-10 to 10 minutes. Feel free to repeat this as many times as you'd like. I personally do 2 glazes for 5 minutes and the end result looks great. When you're happy with it, set the chicken aside and then peel off the foil lid. Now let's take a look at the rice. You'll notice lovely yellow bits stained by the saffron and you'll also see areas wetter than the rest due to the juices that drip down. To finish off the dish just start fluffing up the rice and mixing it, or if you're feeling extra fancy flip the pot over and serve it without mixing. For mine I pulled out the aromatics so they don't get in the way and I mixed it into well combined. The result is some of the most flavourful and delicious rice I've ever made. We're now going to take the mandi to a whole other level with one more optional step, adding in that authentic buried in a culprit flavour. If you have a smoker or grill use that, however if not here's an indoor technique. Quick warning though there is no way that this is good for your health, just bear that in mind. You'll need some small pieces of charcoal and you'll want to shape a small bowl out of foil to place the coal in. Once your bowl is ready, light up the coal using a gas stove or a kitchen blowtorch. You want the coal glowing red hot all over and a small fan will help you get there a lot quicker. I placed the foil bowl in the middle of the rice and then I added a piece of hot coal before placing the chicken on top. If you place the bowl on top of the chicken you won't get much smoke on the rice. When you're ready, pour some vegetable oil onto the coal and watch the magic happen. You need to quickly cover this with a glass bowl to trap in the smoke and then let it sit until you're ready to serve. 
To plate this up, I piled a load of rice onto a plate and then added half of the chicken. After that, I gave it a generous sprinkle of the fried almonds and a handful of fried sultanas. For some contrast, I added some parsley and then I included a bowl of dakku sauce. And here's what that all looked like. All the work was definitely worth it. This dish is going to blow you away. There's honestly no going back after making this. The flavors are just incredible. The rice is perfect. The chicken is so juicy and so flavorful. And that dakku sauce just makes everything so good. Honestly, this is a dish you absolutely have to make. And if you don't make it, I feel sorry for you because you're missing out. Now, if you generally like rice and meat dishes, I've got a bunch more on the channel that you should check out because every single one of them is fantastic. But yeah, this one is killer.